Good Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com podcast presented by Blue Water Climate Control with Austin Price and Rob Lewis. I'm Brent Hubs. Hey, don't forget about Blue Water Climate Control and their winner-only promotion that's going on right now. It's a winner-only promotion on a ductless single zone mini split units. Perfect solution for sunrooms, bonus rooms, in-law suites, rentals, cabin shops, converted garages, office studios, or, or whatever. You know, that room that's always a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, this is an opportunity. This offer is something you will not get in the spring or summer. There's no interest if paid uh, in full financing uh, options are available for qualified buyers. You can call 865-299-2290 for details or go to bluewaterclimatecontrol.com to book your free estimate. I've been telling you about these units. I told you about my mom having one, but we sat out in her sunroom on Christmas day uh, with that unit on. It was nice. It was warm in there. There's snow on the ground, but we're just hanging out having Christmas in the sunroom. They are a fantastic unit. So be sure and check out more information at bluewaterclimatecontrol.com. Remember, they also have their winter maintenance going on as well. Guaranteed heating tune-ups in January and February. No heating repairs through March 31st, so they'll give you 50% discount off the price of the repair. Certain restrictions do apply. You can book online for a special price there. That's at Blue Water Climate Control. Be sure and check them out with all the great options they have going on uh, at this point and going on through the month of January. All right, guys, speaking of options, speaking of a lot of things going on, you know, everybody wants to know what's going on with Jeremy Pruitt, what's going to happen with this football program. I don't know the answer to that question, Rob. I don't know that anybody does. What I do know is clarity has to come sooner rather than later. And I'm not, I'm not saying necessarily today, but this thing cannot drag out for an extensive period of time for a lot of reasons, but certainly for um, recruiting, hiring coaches. And, and I don't think this fan base can, you know, deserves or can handle this thing dragged out over a long period of time. He's either at some point in the near future, you got to say he's either your coach or he's not your coach. Right. I agree. I mean, I think it's festered for, you know, too long now. I mean, perception, it, you know, out there is bad. Like, you know, Tennessee doesn't know what they're doing. Um, you know, I don't think it's fair to, to the coaches themselves. I mean, to be hung out there in limbo. I do think, and I, I know you guys both talked to a lot of people. We all, you know, work the phones. Last last week, it felt more than likely that Tennessee was moving on. I don't, I don't feel that as strongly this week. I don't know what what you what you guys have felt based off conversations, but I'm not saying it's it's a done deal by any means. I'm just saying that things seem to have quieted down. Well, I just think that it depends on Austin who you talk to. I mean, you can have you can have one conversation with somebody that um, should have a pretty good vibe on some things and a feeling about some things, and you get off that phone call and you think, all right, this thing's going to go, you know, in one direction, and then the next phone call you have thirty minutes later with somebody else leads you to think it's in a different direction, you know, and and you can talk to one, the, you can talk to a person on on one day and, and you get a vibe from them and you talk to that same person the next day and the vibe's different. You know, I, I just think that's kind of where it's at right now. And uh, I know that's not what anybody wants to hear, but it, it does seem to be a little bit uncertain and maybe everybody's waiting on this investigation. You know, maybe that's the whole reason. I don't know. I just love the, the, the question in the podcast, Brent, how can you not know what's going on? <laughs> I, I mean, like, I mean, like this, the asinine, question to me I, I you know i mean like things change like every 30 minutes i mean like you know and, and that goes for anything we do whether it's covering a recruit uh you know whether you know how, how a team's going to react to a game plan i mean things change like the wind and so it, it really changes when like you know as rob said <laughs> this coaching staff's got to run up the flagpole and they're just dangling in the wind i mean like it you know it, it doesn't do anybody any good and so uh you know, the fans, coaches, us as, as media guys, um, we're all kind of just kind of in limbo. I told you earlier today, Hubs, I feel like I'm an episode of Say by the Bell and Zach Morris hit the timeout and we're all just froze. You know, I mean, like it's it just kind of where we are. But, uh, you know, this is uh, one of those situations where, you know, uh, you'd think the rubber meets the road sooner rather than later. And, and, and I just can't imagine that we – and I'm not saying that it's going down this week because, I mean, there are people out of town. It is New Year's between Christmas and New Year's, which is a predominant time where people take off. Um, if I just can't imagine that, you know, you get to the end of next week and you don't know one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, I just think you're at that point. I, I think, again, and I understand the, the fans' question. I mean, I understand the frustration. You know, they, 
you know, they just want clarity on all the rumors they hear out there. You know, I mean, they, they, if they bounce around social media, they bounce around a bunch of websites, they hear a bunch of rumors and they want to come to us and get clarity on the rumors. And I want to provide as much clarity as they can, but I'm telling you everything I know at this point. And, and what I know is that there is no clarity right now. I, I don't think a coach on the staff has, has any, the only clarity this coaching staff has at this point is they know that Philip Fulmer wants to keep Jeremy Pruitt as the coach and, and, and the bulk of this coaching staff, I think, or some of this coaching staff intact. Now it's up to coach Pruitt on what he does with his staff. But I think the vibe is that they feel like based on conversations they've had with Philip Fulmer, that he doesn't want to make a change at the head coaching position. And, and I think that's the, that's the greatest amount of clarity that they have at this point. Well, I mean, I, I guess my thing, and it goes back to his question is it's like, you know, sometimes there just isn't news. Like, I mean, everybody just clamors for, like, there to be an update. I mean, how many times did we get that this weekend? What's the update? I mean, Christmas was Friday. Christmas Eve was Thursday. And then you had the weekend. There is no – there's no movement. I mean, think about the days that you're talking about. And so, like, everybody just clamors for, like, this daily update, and there's just not one. And, I mean, you know, other media members can throw out there that it's X percentage or whatever they all they want to. But, you know, I, yeah, I'll kind of stay by, you know – you know, our work and, you know, that goes back to the last search and, you know, the fact that, you know, we didn't go down that John Gruden rabbit hole like some did. So, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, uh, we just got to stick with what you, the people you talk to and, and where you're at, you can't just, you know, start leaning into the rumors. Cause I mean, it, there's so much out there. I mean, how many times have you pointed out, like, you know, on the, you pointed out in the chat, like, some people say he's gone. Some people say he's not. It's happening Monday. It's happening Tuesday. It's happening Wednesday. I mean, like, and that's so true because there's so much out there. Like, well, so much, and, 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 but, you know, it's like, like perfect example is the last coaching search when the, the whole, you know, hey, they're coming in on the plane and there you are out there at the, the, the airport and everybody loves to go, well, if Hubs is here, well, no, you have to check that out. Just like when one of the people on the board, whether they're messing around or not, get on the board and say X, Y, and Z you have to check X, Y, and Z out because that's doing your job because you're not doing anybody any, you know, you know, certain, uh, you're doing them a disservice to not at least dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how many times we've went out and, and look and went outside of a, the UT complex or went to, you know, Dave Hart's house or wherever else and just see who all is there and those type of things. I mean, that happens. You know, I mean, it doesn't mean that anything's going on. It just means you've got to just do your due diligence. Well, that's, I mean, th the worst thing you can do in this business is assume anything. <laughs> yeah, correct. Okay? Assum assumption will get you in, in, a, in a bunch of trouble. I, I mean, like I, like the, the, the freeze thing. Let, let's just talk about the freezing. When you think about like, you know, do you think Tennessee will hire him? I keep going back and forth. It's like, you know, I, you know, part of me thinks that the, the stench of what happened at Ole Miss is still there too much for some people. But I'm the first to say the guy shouldn't be condemned forever. I post this on the board after the chat. I mean, like, at some point, you know, you, uh, a guy can, you know, re be redeemed for his mistakes. I mean, we all make mistakes in what we do, maybe some greater than others. But, I mean, like, you know, it's like Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon made one mistake at Oklahoma when he was a 19-year-old kid. Hadn't been in trouble before, hadn't been in trouble since. And has finally, after a few years of playing in the NFL, gotten past what happened when he hit that girl. That didn't make that didn't make him a bad guy for life, in my opinion. Like he had to, he was a bad guy in that moment. No, and, and I, I think go ahead, Rob. I was just gonna say, I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again on the free stuff. I just don't think Tennessee that, that doesn't feel like a Tennessee move to me. I don't know that the, the president, the chancellor, and perhaps most germane to the topic, like the, the biggest donors to the university would be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. It just and I and I don't think the guy should, you know, be damned forever either. I mean, I think people deserve second chances for sure. That just doesn't – my opinion is that that doesn't feel like something Tennessee has well, started. I mean, I think that the Auburn thing – I think Wayne never got a call from Auburn was because Bruce got in trouble at Auburn. Had Bruce not gotten in trouble at Auburn, I think he probably would have got a call. But I don't think they wanted to go down that road again with their football coach after the basketball coach they took a chance on kind of still got in trouble after they hired him. You know, I mean, I, I think that hurt Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Well, I, I don't think I don't think it helped him. I'll say this at Auburn football is the priority there. And if they thought that that meant winning championships for them and and that's what you know, and that's the you know, that's what they would have. History says that's what they would have done. I think ultimately at Auburn, the AD wanted to do his own thing. And I, and I think that 
he he rallied enough and got enough support from some people while a couple other donors were fighting with each other to sort of get his own thing done because the the donors, the, the key members could not get kind of united on where they were going to go with stuff. And that's kind of what they ended up happening. But I don't think there's any doubt your point, Austin, is right. Had, had, there, had they not hired a guy who had a show calls, who's got them back under an investigation, then I think their viewpoint on Hugh Freeze probably would have been different than, than what it was. Um, so, again, this thing's ever-evolving, and we'll see what happens. Jeremy Pruitt, Austin, on Monday – continued to work as if he was the head coach, not just right now at Tennessee, but the head coach moving forward at the university of Tennessee. As he should, Brent. I mean, Absolutely. like, I mean, like it's the same thing I said in last week's podcast, I have to talk as if he's the head coach. Cause he is the head coach. Like this whole notion that we can just talk as if he's not really here. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like, it just makes no sense to me. So, I mean, you're but right. He did. He spent Monday working right. the phones, calling all these in-state recruits. He talked to the Wade Twins, Cody Jones, Dallin Hayden, Cam Miller, T Ty Simpson. You go right down the list, it, it, the best players in the state, he was on the phone with them on Monday. And I think you're going to see a lot of that going forward. If, it, it, as long as he remains the head coach here, this state's going to be a priority in 2022. Well, and, and I'm writing this for later today, whoever the coach is here, and, and, and I'm saying it's Jeremy Pruitt because he's the coach here at this point, as you, as you pointed out whoever's in charge of this program better win in the state of Tennessee in the class of 2022. Okay. I, look, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying that class will equate to a championship, Rob. I, I'm not saying that that means, wow, that means they're going to go win the sec or they're going to go win a national championship. But the fact of the matter is in rebuilding some, some windows of opportunity are greater than others. Okay. This is a great, this is the great opportunity for Tennessee to get going in the right direction with some consistency because the class of 22 is not heavy laden at one position. There are offensive linemen in this class that are power five guys. There's defensive linemen that are SEC power five guys. There's a quarterback, there's a running back, there's multiple receivers. There's a couple of defensive backs. There's a linebacker. I mean, it, it, it's, it's all encompassing. And if you're Tennessee, you're not going to Georgia and beating Georgia head up on the best players in the state of Georgia on any kind of regular basis. You're not going to do it in Alabama. You're not going to do it in Mississippi. You're not doing it in Louisiana anymore. It's, it's certainly harder to do in North Carolina than it's been. It's harder to do better, in the state. You better win this state. You better make this state the priority for building this thing back. And, and that's got to be where it starts. I'm, I couldn't agree more. There's a bunch of SEC caliber players in the state. More important, there's a bunch of players in the state that, that Alabama wants, that Georgia wants, that Florida wants. I mean, I'm, again, not saying it's you win the SEC championship if you sign the top 12, 13 guys in this state. But this is – I mean, it's an in-state class that can make a difference on your roster in, in, in a tangible way. And it starts, starts at the quarterback position, something Tennessee has been – struggling that with for I mean since since the day Josh Dobbs left campus yeah I mean I, I agree I mean you you look at the fact that I mean Tennessee's somehow found its way through four football seasons since Josh Dobbs moved on to the NFL and you know and, and the crazy part is they really had the same quarterback in every season I mean like I mean, um I, it just it, it's mind-boggling and so yeah it all I mean like you know some of these fans that get on the board and they they you know well, you know, I mean, you know, I, I can do without Ty. Okay. I mean, it, you know, you know, what about the kid from Georgia? You know, uh, okay. I mean, like, it, to me, like, you, you better hope you land Ty Simpson because I don't think you want to find out. Do you really want to find out? I'd rather – if I was a Tennessee fan, I would rather find out Ty was just an okay player with him playing here than to find out he's a stud playing for Alabama. Wouldn't you? I mean, like, I, you know, I just I, – I just – I look back, I look up and like, you know, that Martin stronghold, I mean, think about Westview's produced often Hoosel and Justin Harrell and Chad Jack Clifton. Clifton. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, and they produce some good players. That's there too, there that's, haven't been many busts to come out of Martin, Tennessee. That, that, that's you know, and, and that's such a Tennessee stronghold. I mean, you know, I, it, it, it just when you really think about it, like, you know, when you look at this state, I mean, you know, Memphis is kind of this melting pot over there you know, with so many schools close to it, right on the west side of the state, so far away from Knoxville, Nashville's becoming a melting pot because of all the transplants into town. 
I think that Martin's is about as Tennessee as it gets. So, I mean, like, to me, you've got to find a way to land Ty Simpson at all costs if you're Jeremy Pruitt. Yeah, I mean, I think he's I think he's a – look, you need a quarterback. There's one in the state that's ranked higher than any previous one is ranked. And I think when you look back – and, look, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and suggest that every championship team was laden with all Tennessee guys because that's inappropriate, okay? The 98 championship team had four starters from South Carolina on the defensive line, okay? But there was a, there was a Tennessee vibe to that team as well. You look at Butch's best team. It was – it had Tennessee – quality players okay Tennessee's got to get back to getting the best players in the state of Tennessee and this class gives you an opportunity to sign a dozen kids from in-state who who I think all have a chance to be quality players it's not I'm not saying they're all SEC players or they're all future record holders at Tennessee or anything like that but I, I think there's that there's that kind of depth in this class in terms of contributors that's why you got to go win in this state if you're Tennessee and that has to be a focal point in the priority. And Jeremy Pruitt's made it a priority this week. He has to continue to make it a priority. That has to be this program and this university's priority going forward, regardless of who their football coach is. It has to be the absolute priority. Um, or they're going to miss the boat and miss an opportunity to turn some of their fortunes around, in my opinion. So hey, we'll continue to track all this recruiting, and we'll continue to talk to these in-state guys who – uh, I, I think some of them, you know, were very happy <laughs> with phone calls that took place today, Austin, with, with the calls they got from, from Jeremy Pruitt. And uh, we'll continue to follow that. Obviously, coaching news, coaching assistant news, all those things out there that we will continue to track down and, and continue to dive into and chase all those rumors and everything else that we hear out there uh, in the coming days is, um, again, this resolution on this has to come to a head and, and get done sometime sooner rather than later in the meantime rob lewis the tennessee basketball team gets ready to start sec play against maybe the surprise team of the conference probably the surprise team of the conference in in missouri uh and and what do you what do you what are you surprised by i guess by the tigers to this point and, and looking at them and then you know what are your what are your thoughts on this team heading into conference play i mean i'm just surprised i mean missouri has played a pretty good schedule, you know, in comparison to a lot of people. They've got wins over two ranked teams in Oregon and Illinois. And, um, you know, I, I I don't want to say I'm shocked, but I, I guess they've been a little you – know, they weren't the last time out when they beat Bradley 54-53, to 53, but they've been a little bit better offensively than I thought they would. But nothing that, you know, Conzo team does on, on defense or rebounding should surprise you. And I think that, you know, they're following a formula where they've got a lot of veterans. You know, they've got guys that have played a lot of, a lot of basketball in this league. Um, you know, several seniors, juniors that, um, you know, know, know the program, know what Martin expects and, you know, are, are his kind of guys. And I know Tennessee fans, you know, he left a sour taste in a lot of you know, Tennessee fans' minds. But, uh, you know, his, his best teams were, you know, really tough-minded, really tight chemistry. And, and, I, and I think that's what this team is. And his, now, best, his best teams were veteran teams too, which is the case for most people. But, I mean, he, he's had his run – and tried to do the one and done thing with some guys. And I just didn't, I mean, some of that was due to injury, I know, but, but the personalities on those things didn't seem to work very well for him kind of playing that style or having that style of player in his program. I mean, seems yeah, like I mean, it's a building type thing for him. That makes I agree. Him. I mean, I think he, I mean, he does best with blue collar kids. I don't think there's any question about that. With kids that, that really buy in to what he wants to do. And I, and I think he's got a bunch of those guys now that have, that have played a lot of basketball for him. All right, let's talk a little bit about Tennessee. And, and, look, we've had a chance to see a whole bunch of guys the last three or four games because they've played opponents that Tennessee has been able to manhandle and have complete control of, uh, you know. And, and so Rick's got a chance to experiment with different lineups, play a bunch of different guys. What, what's the rotation for this team look like as they go into conference play? What do you think he's going to do? I really thought it was going to be eight, but the way he's handled uh, in Camwa the last couple games, I, I think it, it's going to be nine. I mean, I think he – you know, talking with him, he really trusts Olivier. He wants to reward him because he's working hard, like like he wants to see him practice. And you know, that's that's a that's a huge deal with Rick, uh, is earning it in practice. You know, as it is with, with most coaches. But when when guys do what they're asked and you know work on the things that he wants them to work on, he you know he feels obligated to reward that. And so I think you're going to see Olivier's minutes be kind of in line with uh, 
with Anna Siki right now. And that, that to me has been like maybe the only surprise. I mean, I, I also kind of thought that Jaden and, and Keon would, would be starters. I mean, I didn't, I'm not stunned. I mean, cause I, I, I everybody in that group is going to play you know, those five guards are going to play 18, 24, 25 minutes a night. But um, I'm surprised that, you know, Josiah and, and Bailey have, have kind of held them off because I, I think he's starting Viscovi no matter what. I think, I think Santiago has a special place in, in Rick's heart, but um, that, I, I like where they're at. I mean, I think, you know, I think they did better offensively, especially if they hadn't had that 11 day layoff, missed four games. I mean, I think that's where you're going to see them make the most progress. I would expect some ugly moments here in the early going offensively against a good defensive team like, like Missouri, but defensively, I mean, I just, I just think they're so good and, and I love the depth. I mean, they're, I'm, I've said this a lot, but I mean, they're, they're like better guards in the country than what Tennessee has, but I, I, I would argue I doubt that anybody has five better, better interchangeable like like Rick has to play with. How does he manage this team? There's, I mean, look, there's expectations. This league is not lighting it up in terms of, you know, Kentucky's obviously not very good. They got some issues. Nobody in this league is exactly jumping out there. So the expectation, I think you said this on a podcast that Tennessee may be favored and. 15 of 16 conference games or, or some, you know, 14 of 16 conference games. How do you think he manages this team with all the, with all the expectations that are around them? And does he do anything different with them compared to what he did with that team that went to number one uh, with, with Grant and, and Admiral and those guys in terms of how he manages it? I, I don't think so. I think kids have to adjust to, to this head coach. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it's the other way around. No, I'm saying, you know, he might handle some individuals differently than he does other guys on the team. But I think, I, I don't think his style changes. And I, I can tell you from talking to some people that he's, he, he treats the freshman and, and demands as much as the freshman as he did, you know, Grant Williams when he was a two time SEC player of the year. So I, I think he's so tough on them that it is really difficult, if not impossible for them to ever, you know, rest on their laurels or, or, you know, read, you know, read their press clippings and think that they don't, you know, that, that they have arrived, that they don't need to get better. They don't need to keep working. I mean, I, I think that's one of his strengths as a coach is just the, the, the standard that he sets and how much effort he puts into, you know, making kids meet that standard on a daily basis. And I'm talking about work and attitude and effort. Well, it should be fun to watch this team get into SEC play and, and maybe they can get into a routine of some games and hopefully this league can manage, you know, the virus and all the protocols to the point that they can get into a regular routine and, and get into playing because, I mean, every Tennessee fan wants to see what this team looks like as the competition gets better in league play. And certainly there's plenty of opportunities abound for this team. There's plenty going on at VolQuest.com as well. Plenty of stories, plenty of uh, – Post on the message board, plenty of replies from us as we continue to track down everything we can find. We're also bringing you the latest in recruiting, plenty of uh, updates coming uh, forthcoming on some in-state kids, including later today. And of course, we'll have coverage of Tennessee and Missouri Wednesday night. Hey, don't forget about our friends at Blue Water Climate Control. You can book online. Don't forget about that. Eight out of 10 Blue Water customers now book online. It saves you time and money. Book online can save you 10% on repairs, $30 on service plans, 25% on maintenance and other seasonal promotions. Same day booking available seven days a week. Pick the day and time that fits your busy schedule. Go to bluewaterclimatecontrol.com to book right now. That's going to do it for this edition of the podcast presented by our good friends at Blue Water Climate Control. For Austin Price and Rob Lewis, I'm Brent Hubs. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, everybody.